our top stories this morning, of course, Portugal gearing up for that billion euro debt sale later on today. That as the clock continues to tick on its lame duck government. And let's also see some kind of rescue as being pretty much inevitable at this point. But while the eurozone remains shrouded in uncertainty, we've been seeing some decisive moves in M&A. Cash stacking up on corporate balance sheets and deals between Vivendi, Vodafone, Solve, Rodia suggest Europe is getting a taste for takeovers. So who is likely to be the next big spender and which industries are on the shopping list? Well, Gary Baker is head of European equity strategy at Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. He joins me now. Thanks so much for speaking to us. So tell me about potential M&A targets. Well, I think, you know, I don't think you can rule anything out at this stage. And that's because I think corporate Europe in, in gen, general shape is, is just in the best uh, financial health it's been in for many, many years. So I think it, yeah, if you look at broad numbers, then the most attractive sector in terms of cash generation by far is basic resources. Now, you've already got, you know, several big, large corporates there. So maybe the scope for further acquisition is perhaps slightly more limited. <laughs> But I think the telecom situation this week has shown that you know, even in mature industries, you can't rule out the idea that there's further uh, conglomerates being formed or, or swapping of uh, major stakes. So I think you know, across all industries, whether it's chemicals, industrials, financials, telecoms, you really are looking at uh, the potential for a lot more M&A activity in Europe and really following the trends that we've already seen established within the US. What about worries concerning sovereign defaults, Gary, in some European countries, depressing valuations, making a stronger case for buying the region's shares? I don't think that's, that's probably not sufficient to really uh, persuade companies one way or the other. I think you know, any corporate really looking at large-scale M&A is going to have to look at it on a five to ten year view. Uh, and I'm not sure whether you know, a 10%, 20% cheaper valuation now really is going to be that swing factor. I think the issue is still do they think that growth prospects in particularly in peripheral nations are going to be strong enough to warrant you know activity taking them further into those uh, those countries so which industries are attractive right now it as, as i say uh, it really is across the board i think it, it's wherever you've got degrees of um, you know, fragmented industries perhaps travel and leisure uh, chemicals um, and the, the issue there becomes, you know, I think in the past a lot of people have tried to focus on you know, buying the likely targets. Uh, and I think that's worked for a certain amount of time, premiums being paid, etc. But I think there's, a, there's going to also be an argument for, for backing the winners in this. These roll-up strategies and which companies emerge from this downturn and this recovery in stronger financial shape and are able to take market share with acquisition. I think there's, there's arguments for both sides, whereas previously I think it was really just focused on trying to pick who the targets would be, but we broadened out from there now. Okay, so it's almost like the criteria has changed. Does it matter that economic growth in Europe is going to be twice as weak this year as it is in the US? I mean, where will company earnings growth come from? I think that's, that, that's something the market's still got to get to grips with. I mean, if, you know, on our estimates, you probably saw close to 40% EPS growth last year in Europe uh, as you got this very strong recovery from, uh, obviously, the 08, 09 situation. But, you know, we, we expect that to moderate to down to, you know, 10, 15% maximum EPS growth this year. So I think markets have got to get used to the idea that you're through that initial V-shaped phase uh, now, you're still going to see, you know, above long-term average rates of growth, we suspect, this year and next. So there's still a reasonable backdrop in terms of profitability, and certainly against that, valuations do not look in any way expensive as far as Europe on absolute basis or relative to the U.S. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. How do European stocks look like relative to the U.S.? I, th I think they look attractive. I mean, it's, you know, clearly there's... Investors would make the argument then, you know, as long as you've still got a peripheral European sovereign problem, then it deserves to trade at a discount. But I think that only, that only goes so far. I think ultimately the growth profile of the U.S. and European EPS uh, for the markets is going to look very similar this year and perhaps next as well. So, you know, I'd, I'd make an argument that I think, you know, Europe looks cheap relative to the U.S. based on that growth outlook. Gary Baker of Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, thanks so much.